Hey, babe. When can you make me some closet organizer for the kids' room? Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking about maybe making one of these tables or maybe a Morris chair or something. If you're too busy, maybe we can just get something from Ikea. Well, that was close. For a minute there, I thought I was going to have to live in the same house with some cheap, mass-produced furniture. Hi, my name is Brian Havens, and welcome to my workshop. Today, I'd like to talk about the material that I use to make uh, these closet organizers, melamine-coated particle board. Melamine-coated particle board, or melamine for short, is a sheet of particle board coated with a highly stain and abrasive resistant plastic made with melamine resin. It comes in a variety of colors and patterns, and even textures, and is available in all the standard sheet material thicknesses. Now, some people are probably thinking, particle board, that's cheap. That has no place in fine furniture, and you'd be right. You wouldn't want to use this stuff for, for fine furniture. The other thing is, not all particle board is created equal. There's some really shoddy stuff that you'll see in mass-produced furniture, all the way up to this stuff right here, which is a cabinet-grade particle board coated with melamine. Just take a look at these three samples of melamine particle board. On the bottom we have a piece of melamine particle board from a manufacturer of mass-produced furniture. You can see how the flakes are pretty large. There's a lot of space in there. You almost feel like you could just take it and rip it, rip it apart. Uh, next up, up from there, a little bit better, this is a piece of melamine coated particle board purchased from a home center. It's a little bit more, it's more dense than this one, it's a little bit tougher, but you can still see that there are, st the, the, the flaking in here is a little bit, in the middle here at least, is a little bit large and a lot of, a lot of voids and stuff. Now I'll take a look at this stuff on the top. This is a piece of melamine particle board. This is the stuff I use all the time. I purchase from a uh, place that caters to cabinet makers. You can see how dense this uh, particle board is here. You can, if you look close enough, you'll still see some tiny voids, but the overall uh, granularity of the material used and the density of it is makes it much much uh, stronger and better and holds screws much better than than any of the, either of the either of these two. So if you're going to go and use melamine particle board, I suggest you can if you can find a local place that sells the cabinet makers get get this stuff on top right here. It's worth the extra bucks. Melamine is my sheet material of choice when it comes to home improvement cabinetry. The faces of my understair storage are made from painted poplar and MDF, but all the carcasses and drawer boxes are made from melamine. Its surface is durable and pre-finished and resists the abrasions of daily use. Another place that I've used melamine is in kitchen cabinetry. The faces on my kitchen cabinets are made from bird's eye maple with black walnut accents, but all the carcasses behind the faces are made from melamine. It's stain resistant and makes for easy cleanup and won't absorb food like regular particle board will. But by far the place that I use melamine the most is in the shop. All of my shop storage and workstations are made from melamine. It's relatively fast to build, cost effective, and tough enough to withstand the abuses of the shop. As testimony to just how tough melamine is, I once had a can of lacquer leak in one of my base cabinets made of melamine. I softened the uh, lacquer with some lacquer thinner and scraped it off without damaging the melamine. Now that's pretty tough. So hopefully by now I've got you a little bit excited about being able to use melamine for some shop furniture or some uh, home improvement or some of those honeydews. Um, but uh, there's a few things you want to know about uh, dealing with dealing with melamine. Um, well, the first time I uh, uh, went to use melamine, I just took, I think it's particle board, it's pretty soft stuff. So I put in the uh, saw blade uh, that came with my, my table saw and, uh, well, sh I'll show you what happened. So I have my uh, the saw blade that came with my saw stop, a piece of my melamine particle board. And uh, we're going to make a... Uh, 
the top side. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. See, it's not too bad. Uh, some minor chipping out on here. Nothing real. Nothing too terrible that you wouldn't be able to live with. But now let's look at the bottom. Look how badly that's all chipped out. Uh, now that wouldn't be so bad if it was an edge that you wouldn't see, say the back of a cabinet or something. But uh, you know, sometimes if we're using you're using slab doors, using this for doors, you're going to see all edges of it, and this this would be unacceptable. So um, what we have to do to avoid that is, um, especially for the bottom, is make a scoring cut first. Uh, let me show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to lower the saw blade just enough so it's just sticking out. And what I want to do is just score that melanie. There you can see, not too bad, chip. well, probably can't see. Uh, not too bad chipped out. I'll bring it back and show when I finish. Uh, this time I'm going to raise the blade and finish the cut. Now it's really important you don't want to change, you don't want to move the fence at all because it's even if you have a really accurate fence it's really hard to reproduce put it in the same spot as before. So try to do these cuts uh, without uh, resetting your fence. <laughs> Uh, you can see how much better it looks now, Not less, much less chipping out. There are also a variety of saw blades available designed specifically for cutting melamine without the need for making scoring cuts. They range in price from around $60 all the way up to $150. They employ a variety of tooth patterns and configuration, all aimed at minimizing chip out. Whether or not to invest in a melamine cutting blade, and how much to spend on one it depends on how much and what kind of work you plan on doing. For home improvement and shop cabinetry, a low-end blade should suffice. For office or kitchen cabinetry, consider spending a little bit more. If you also use hardwood plywood in your projects, you may be able to justify the cost of a blade that works both on melamine and plywood. And here's a tip. Even when I'm using a melamine blade, I still make scoring cuts on my most visible edges. Okay, so one other thing we got to worry about in dealing with melamine, the same problem as you have when you're dealing with any kind of sheet material, is uh, we have to take care of this uh, unfinished edge here. And so we basically have, um, we have two choices. The first is used to use some edge tape. Uh, there's different kinds. Uh, you can get uh, peel and stick where you just peel it off, has sticky stuff in the back, you peel it off like a sticker and put it on there. It's okay, but it's expensive. Uh, they also make uh, stuff with no adhesive at all, but um, I don't know what you would use to, uh, to glue it on. That's mainly used, uh, cabinet shops have special machines that use that uh, and they, they apply the glue as they do it. Uh, the best, I think, for, for shop use is to use um, iron-on. I know it sounds, it sounds uh, cheesy, but uh, this is actually pretty good glue, uh, heat sensitive glue that they put on the back of this thing. Uh, and it's pretty simple, and let me show you, we just uh, basically break it off and iron on, let me give you... So I basically take a tip of this stuff, just give a little bit of extra on both ends, and uh, actually on one end, but, and then snap it right off. Now my iron here is set to uh, your iron. There we go. Uh, usually set to around polyester or so. I don't know if you can see that there. And uh, I, this stuff is a little bit wider than the uh, sheet material itself, so uh, you don't have to try to line it right up as long as you have a little bit of overhang on each side and basically just iron it right on, let the heat get warm enough to activate the, the, the glue. Just like that. And I'll usually use a piece of uh, MDF like this. And I'll just, just uh, press it down, make sure it's down nice and tight. I tilt a tiny bit in one direction, make sure it's nice and tight on the edge, and same on the other side, and that's it. And uh, be surprised, this iron and stuff, I've never had any peel off. Uh, it, it's pretty good, pretty good stuff. 
Now we have this little overhang uh, to deal with. So there's a couple things you can do. If you don't have a lot of work, if you're not doing a lot of this stuff, you can just use uh, a file like this one. Um, it helps if it has the, I don't forget what they call this, but it has the teeth on the edge of it as well. So you can basically just uh, file it off. And in fact, if you were using a wood edge banding, this, this actually I find works better. Uh, that works pretty much the best. Um, because you don't get, the, the wood will tend to uh, tear out with the grain um, more easily. But uh, using, uh, using, the, using the melamine edge banding, um, they have these little neat uh, tools specifically for this job. They're not too expensive and they, they really make quick work of it. You just put it on, on there and it cuts both sides nice and flush. And then for the edges, like here uh, on the end, I just, uh, I just use the, the file. I make it flush. You can see that on the edge here. I just hold the file flush on the edge and just file it down, nice and flush. Good to go. Now, the other, uh, the other way to go is to use um, a hardwood edging. Uh, if you have some kind of, uh, if you have a uh, heavy duty, like in the shop, you know this drawer, uh, some kind of drawer you have is going to be um, really taking an abuse. Uh, you can actually put hardwood edges. And that's what I did on some of my workshop. Go right out right over here to show you. You can see I basically uh, put took a piece of quarter inch hardwood and uh, glued and nailed it to the edge and uh, came back and cleaned it up, rounded it over, and sanded it afterwards. Now this is a little bit more work, um, obviously, than using the the, the, the iron on bed, uh, the iron on uh, edge banding is. Is really quick and dirty, but you can't beat this for, for durability, especially in a shop if you know it's going to get banged up with tools. A um, little bit more work, but, but really tough. Um, several of my workstations, uh, I use this. So now that we have our panels cut and uh, our edges that are going to show banded, um, it's time to start putting some panels together. <clears throat> so. There's a, there's a few options. Um, one it's kind of a, it was a traditional production way of putting, putting panels together uh, called Conformat screws. Uh, I've never tried these. Uh, I've seen uh, a few people use them. Um, they require a special drill bit uh, and I also hear they're a little bit tricky uh, to use if you don't have the production equipment. So I've never actually used those. Don't know if I'd recommend them uh, for a shop scenario. Uh, another way to put these panels together is to use um, biscuit joinery. Um, biscuit joinery solves the problem of when I, let's say I want to put a vertical panel here, it cuts through the melamine, so I don't have to worry about gluing melamine to, to, uh, to wood. Um, and so I can use regular yellow glue to do that. And it's, it's pretty strong for a lot of applications. Um, but more often than not, what I end up doing is just using screws. Now, you can't use uh, any old screw for putting particle board together. Uh, regular wood screws, the, the threads are, are not deep enough and they'll, they won't hold very well in particle board, or particle board at all. Um, at a minimum, for working with particle board, I would, I would suggest using a dry wall screw. Uh, you can get these at regular home centers uh, and, and they, they work pretty good, they're inexpensive. Um, they also, often you'll find sort of a general purpose deep thread screw at uh, different home centers and I've used both of these in the past. Uh, the, the downside of these screws is I've, I've snapped the heads off of these several times and got a little bit frustrated. So I went looking around doing a little research to see what else was available and I found an online real retailer um, that specializes in really tough screws and they're, they're all uh, square drive which also keeps them from stripping. This is a hardened steel screw and I actually pay I think either about the same or less than I pay pay for these. I, I buy them in, in lots of a thousand because I use I use quite a few. Um, really tough screw uh, holds really well. Um, yeah, I, I like these a lot. I use these these everywhere. I've actually pretty much banished everything else from my shop except for these hard steel ones. Um, let's see what else you can get. Uh, uh, the other thing to notice about all three of these kinds of screws is that unlike a regular wood screw uh, that has a different different diameter for the shank and then for the pilot hole, this is the same size. That's going to save you a little bit of work. You're only going to have to drill just the pilot hole size and that'll also work for the shank. You don't have to drill, you don't have to drill a separate diameter for the shank like you do with a wood, uh, regular wood screw. 
Um, you can also get, uh, there's a lot of different stuff on the market that you can use that will uh, cut the countersink and the hole at the same time. Um, if you're going to be using screws to do a whole uh, set of cabinets, um, there's, there's going to be a lot of holes and this is, this is going to save you a lot of time. And uh, speaking of, uh, speaking of um, uh, drilling pilot holes, you absolutely cannot get away without pilot holes when uh, dealing with uh, in a particle board. It'll, it'll split apart pretty badly and um, so yeah, forget about it. Uh, not, not using them. Um, use, um, use pilot holes. Um, one other thing you can use to help, uh, help you with uh, uh, doing some assembly, uh, it's optional, but I find sometimes if I'm worried that the screws aren't going to be strong enough, there is a glue that you can get. It's called a Roux glue. Um, this actually is specifically for bonding wood to melamine or melamine to melamine. So if you're not, if you want a little bit of extra strength or you need some application where you actually absolutely have to glue the uh, melamine to the particle board or the melamine to melamine to melamine, you can pick up some of that stuff. It's um, pretty easy to work with, just like yellow glue. And, and until it dries, it's actually uh, white, it cleans up with water. So, um. so that's, uh, those are the main two things you gotta be taking into consideration when um, dealing with uh, melamine, the, the cutting with the chip out. Um, any all sheet materials are going to have that same problem to some extent, but um, melamine being so brittle uh, chips out really re easy. So make your scoring cuts and consider the um, consider the melamine cutting blades, and then uh, the edge blend, edge banding. Um, well, there's a few more things you might want to uh, cons you, know, you need to know uh, about uh, melamine. Um, it comes in uh, almost any color you can imagine. Uh, but uh, there, there's kind of a catch. Um, the uh, the um, edge banding comes in uh, different sizes. This is a, it comes in 50 foot rolls. This is about a partially used 250 foot roll. And uh, it also comes in a 600 foot roll. Now, uh, when you go to, when you go to uh, buy melamine, you'll probably find they have lots of white in stock. And they probably even have uh, black and, um, and almond. Um, they might have some other stuff in stock too, but the, the catch is they probably don't have the smaller rolls of the edge banding, so you'll have to pay, you'll have to buy, if you really want to use those colors, you're probably going to have to buy a 600 foot roll of uh, edge banding, um, so keep that in mind. Um, the other thing uh, when you're handling um, melamine to be aware of is uh, a cut edge, these cut edges right here, they can be really, really sharp like a knife, I've cut myself pretty badly. Uh, um, several times on this, and it bleeds just like a like a glass cut or a knife cut. Uh, so be careful with that. Um, when I go to buy melamine, I always make sure I, I bring a pair of gloves with me, either leather or the ones with the uh, rubber pregnant in the hands. Um, but uh, please, please, please do not use gloves when you're when you're cutting on a table saw. It's very dangerous. Um, the gloves will. What happens is the glove will get caught in the saw blade before you feel it, and it'll pull your hand right into the saw blade. So. Um, as far as dealing this, with this stuff while you're cutting it, just be cognizant of the fact that it's sharp. Uh, but please do not, do not wear gloves while you're cutting on the table side. Well, I gotta get back to my closet organizers. I have uh, one more module to glue up and the glue on this one is just about dry. So um, I hope you found this uh, video informative um, and useful. If you make anything out of melamine, take some pictures and uh, send, uh, send me a link to those pictures. So uh, until next time, uh, Stay safe and have some fun.